As you've probably figured out by now, one thing that makes my heart absolutely sing is helping others open up their intuition, be able to access it. It's already there, it's natural, it's strong. And I'm consistently thinking of different ways to approach teaching because you know what? We all learn a little bit different. So I'm gonna start a little series here. I'll do a couple of these. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it helps you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a behind the scenes and kind of bring you into reading sessions that I've done. And hopefully that'll be a helpful teaching tool. Real quick, if you're new to this channel, welcome. And what an interesting place to start. A lot of these sessions are focused on honing your intuition. So I highly encourage you to go into some of the other sessions. You'll see that they're a bit different than the one you jumped into today. Either way, I'm glad you're here. Make sure to hit subscribe and the notification button because I want you to get all those future videos. This is about you and I working together, opening up that intuition of yours and living more in the flow. Okay, this is gonna be fun. So for this mini series, I'll do a couple of these. Please let me know, give me some feedback. Let me know if these are helpful for you when it comes to you opening up your intuition. Is it helpful for you to watch sessions uh, that I've done and maybe hear a couple teaching points along the way? Because that's exactly what we're set up to do here. And like I said, I'll do a couple of them. Let me know what you think. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of giving you a behind the scenes look into a reading session that I've done. You'll get to watch a portion of it. It's not the whole thing. I, you know, otherwise this would be a really, really long session. Um, but I took out kind of a main focus area out of this session. And there's a couple teaching points that I want to share with you throughout this. Now, a few things right out of the gate. I always get permission. I always get permission. Most of the reading sessions that I do, clearing sessions I do, they're never even recorded. We don't share them with the general public, but occasionally I'll run across like an existing student or someone who says, you know what, yeah, if, if this will be helpful for teaching, please uh, go ahead and post it out into the public. And so I always make sure to cover all those bases before I share anything. With that said, I also don't edit these down dramatically. My main reason for that is I wanna show you it's not necessarily always what it looks like on TV. There's a lot of editing involved with television because there's time restraints. And so what I'm inviting you to watch is what it really looks like for an intuitive to sit and read and pick up information. Really important to say right here though. Because <laughs> if you've been with me for a while, you've heard this before. Everyone's intuition flows differently. Everyone's intuition uh, works differently. Your intuition is unique to you. Mine is unique to me. So yeah, you are gonna be watching me tap in and do a reading for somebody else. Readings for yourself or for someone else might not look the same way for you, but I think we can find some nuggets in here that are really helpful overall when it comes to allowing intuition to flow going with that flow, maybe some of the potential roadblocks, some things that might come up, and what you can do about it. Let's dive in. This first portion of the reading, the two takeaways that I want you to really take away are, number one, always I always introduce myself, I always talk about how my process works for people so they kind of know what to expect. And I'll go ahead and play that for this very first series for you so you can see what it's like to kind of step in to a session. And the second takeaway from this first portion is the biggest one of all. And I'm gonna ask for your forgiveness right out of the gate if we do this series and I say this many times because it is that important. Always say what you see, feel, and hear. Really good readers, they go with the flow however it comes in. And this particular reading was really unique because I don't tend to get a lot of anniversary or birthday signs. I have a dictionary, an intuitive dictionary, where when I see different symbols, it means different things. But I tend to, every reader's different. They tend to kind of get, you know, they can tap into certain things more frequently or more easily. And anniversaries and birthdays are not top of the list. But this right here, what you're about to see, is an exclamation point on how you have to let it come through the way it's going to come through. Because if I would block what what's coming through here by saying, oh, I don't normally get anniversary stuff, we would have missed a really big piece of information. 
I'm going to take a couple seconds and just uh, sit quiet, get centered, uh, and give you a feel for, uh, this will be a little bit more like a couple minutes, I'm going to give you a feel for what's coming in. I let spirits, like, you know, just say what, however they want to do it. And I just say what I see feeling here. All right, here we go. Um, I, it's not a big pat cause you know, intuitives have different patterns and it's not a big pattern for me to get anniversaries and birthdays and stuff, but that all just started rushing in and I'm like, huh? Okay. So there's a lot of people for, I'm just going to throw that out as a vibe that hit first. I'm like, it's someone's birthday. It's somebody's anniversary. Somebody passed at a certain day, like all that kind of came in. And I was like, wow, that's not, that's not my usual MO, but that's really cool. Uh, right. My mom passed two years ago today. Your mom passed two years ago. Okay. Thanks. So we know who barged in first <laughs> then. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, I to, honestly, I couldn't even look at anything else. I was like, I got it. Anniversary, big date. Okay. We're on it. Yes. Here we go. Yes. Um. So I'm not going to read the way I normally do. I'm going to let it happen the way it's happening. We're going to talk to mom. Okay. Um. Mom strikes me as the type that in a heightened situation, she's there. Got it. Boom, 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 boom. But afterwards, we're going to fall apart. We're going to talk about it. We're going to fall apart a little bit in a wonderful way. And I say that because it was this rush. And then I was like, this is the rush. And you were like, here's the anniversary. And she was like, yay. And then all of a sudden it was like, I love her. <laughs> like, okay. Yes. Yes. Um, your mom has a lot of personality. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. She also, yes. She, yep. She's also talking about compartmentalizing that personality for certain people. Um, so public is public, but you get all of me when it's just you and me. So I don't know if she was an extroverted introvert. But, but that, that fits. Okay. I, she's talking about, uh, so is your dad still here then? Okay. Um, I asked that because, um, I saw random, a golf cart, just random. And then she's like, and then I see him and then I see like her, her like watching over him, but not like overseeing him. I don't know why that's really important. Like I can't like tell him what to do um <laughs> but she is watching over him your mom and your dad uh at the core are these are these two souls that absolutely had a soul connection they were absolute soulmates diehard best friends um but their marriage wasn't stereotypical she says she's like it was um it was two it was it was partners in the sense of partners. Like that's how she's describing their marriage. It wasn't this like heated romance novel. She's like, no, we were in it to win it. This is it. Um, She worries about him a lot. Um, Mm. And now she's showing me a golf cart again. Does he golf? He does. Okay. All right. Very active. He's staying very active, you know, to not feel essentially too much. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm like, I love golf carts, but she's like, yeah, it's he golf. So I'm like, got it. Okay. Um, so I feel like I feel very strongly that this is why she's showing me the golf cart. She's also saying, I'm not trying to control, I'm not trying to change anything, because I feel like he's doing everything that he's supposed to do, but it doesn't discount the pain. Um, and she acknowledges that. So oh, yeah. um does dad also not he's not open to hearing this type of stuff, like from you type thing? Oh, he is. He is. Okay. She, she was less than him. He's pretty open. He doesn't, he wouldn't seek it out himself, but he is very curious about my world and everything in it. So he's always okay. like, oh, very cool. And okay. he's had some visions himself. So he's definitely connected. He just hasn't tuned into it. Okay. Okay. Um, This just doesn't feel like their cup of tea and that's okay. So they're doing it the way that they do it. Right. And that's, Yes. Absolutely beautiful. Are there any questions that I can ask for you about dad? Because I feel like that was sort of it in a nutshell for her with what she wanted to say. Just that, like if there's anything we could be doing to support him more, you know. Um, yeah, it's definitely see the thing is is he's doing everything he's supposed to do right now. 
Um, and so just keeping that going. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's it, the things that he chooses to do are the things that are kind of meditative for him. That's how he lets the world fall away is he, you know, does those t- types of things. And it feels like it's more than golf too. It feels like he's, he's got a couple of things that are really important. Yeah. He's, he's good. She's watching over him. Okay. Very cool. There's something about um, he him toggling between stubborn and funny. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, okay. So that's, she said, she's like, so you know when your dad's okay? Because he's toggling between stubborn and funny. So let that be your guide. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. And there it is. Mom came through uh, with her way of coming through, which was talking about her anniversary. And when you allow, when you receive, when you say what you see, feel, and hear, you link in deeper. It's easier to see what's coming through. It's always more clarity when you give the information for psychics or the spirit for mediums when you give them or that the floor to tell you what they want to tell you. Now, one question that might've popped up at this point is, Bo, why do you look away? (laughs) Why do you look over here when you're reading and not at the client? And it's not just avoidance. I'm actually going to to (laughs) respect that answer because it could be that, like, oh, avoidance. But it's not. It might look like that. It might look like I'm not focusing in on the person that I'm speaking to. And the session is done over video, but I am looking away. This is because a huge, huge um, tool for tapping in intuitively and staying tapped in is the ability to disconnect from the agreed upon reality, the ability to uh, let go of the focus of the material world around you. And that is how I trained myself as a reader to do that. I look down at one particular spot and then I let everything kind of unfold around me. So while I might not necessarily every single moment be looking at her mother coming through in spirit form, I'm looking in the general area, trying hard not to look at the material world around me, the room, the floor, the carpet, the table, etc. I'm letting all that go because I'm putting my focus toward that which is not in the material world. Now, in in other situations, I might look in a different direction if I'm speaking with a guide or something like this, but I always tend to kind of zoom out a little bit. What also happened in that previous section was you heard her mother coming through in spirit talking about a golf cart. Again, that's something that came out of the blue, and we have to sort of relax into allowing those things to not only pop in randomly, and if they don't make sense, it's okay. So no matter how it comes in, how you feel it, see it, hear it, if it's something that doesn't seem to fit with the conversation you're having at hand or the message that you're delivering right away, please still say it because they do. Those little things pop in and then they they usually tend to fall in line with what you're talking about. Sometimes they don't. And that's okay and we just tell people, "Hey, just hold on to it. You might it might make more sense later." But when little things like that pop up, It's always important to say what you see, feel, and hear. Now, in this next little snippet here, we're going to talk a a little bit about family, about a sister, and then a little bit about like her husband. So some of these are, all of these actually are really sort of interpersonal relationship, you know, messages coming through. And one thing I've always loved about spirit is that when it's coming through, They have always, for me, and for any really reputable reader, (laughs) and for people who are very uh, strong in their ethics and um, very respectful of others' lives and uh, privacy, I've always found that spirit comes through and is very definitive on explaining situations without diving into people's personal business. So what you're going to see in this next one is how information came through in such a way that it was precise enough that she went, yep, that is what's going on without details that didn't need to be hashed over, details that 
were none of my business as the reader, you could say. And it was probably delivered at her comfort level because you know who knows what your sitter's comfort level is? Her guides, her loved ones. And I always set that intention when I do sessions, especially you know, for other people, is if I'm trying to pick up information for other people, tell me in a way that not only will make sense to them, not necessarily to me, but also uh, will be delivered in such a way that it's clear enough for them without them feeling uncomfortable about anything. Because I don't need to know about the backstory, right? I just need to know the main message that goes through. Because here's another really important teaching moment. It's not about being right as a reader. It's not... And, you know, for all the skeptics that are like, oh, proof, sit down, (laughs) sit down, go find something else to focus on. I was a skeptic. I get it. I understand what I'm talking about, who I'm talking to and who I'm working with right now. It's about where they're at and it's about their emotional uh, balance and health. And it's not about me having to prove something because if I approach a session with someone It's got to be proof-based, right? And now I'm not discounting evidential mediums. There are evidential mediums out there that that is how their intuition flows by completely focused on proof-based information coming through, and they're amazing. But for me, my information, uh, my purpose for doing sessions is guidance and clarity and confirmation and direction, and I don't need to know everything. So... If I focus on proof, I'm not focused on the client. I'm focused on making myself feel better. And that's not has nothing to do with it. So you'll see in this next clip that proof comes through without exposure. We'll put it that way. Now she wants to talk about you. Right? Yeah. Um, were you and mom like the gossip girls? Were you two the the and I mean that like in a good way, not in a bad way. I mean like did you hear what's going on with so and so? Did you hear what's going on with so and so? Did you two do that together? Um, maybe a little. More just she was the person that everyone went to for everything, you know, and she just always okay. gave wise sage advice, you know. Yeah. So she was always in tune with who was doing what, mm-hmm. right? Um what's really cool about her is she feels like she's not quick to judge. That's what she feels like. She's more quick to say, maybe that's what's good for them. Very much. And I really like that energy coming to like, I can feel it. And it makes me feel safe with her because I feel like no matter what I would say to her, if I was her kid, whatever I would say to her, I would still be okay. Yes. Yes. That's part of her legacy. Mm-hmm. And that's part of what she brought through to the family. Now, is there, I know you've got a sister. We figured that out, but is there three siblings total? Yeah. Okay. Two sisters. So is it, is it three ladies? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the other sister then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then we're gonna talk about you, but, um, but let's talk about the other sister just really quickly. Uh, or, we all have ups and downs in life. We all have them and we all have challenges um, your sister, if not already is heading into a challenge that is going to cause her to feel very internally protective of herself. Yes. And the, the, the best loving reminder, it's almost like mom wants to like come back and be like, this is what I would say. Can you say it for me? Because this is what I would say. That's how she's coming through. Um, the best loving reminder for your sister is that, um, Everyone does things because that's the role they're playing and that, but everyone is really of love and it's not, you know, it's just a lot of reminders of that. Yeah. Talk to her the way mom would talk to her. Okay. Benefits of the benefit of the doubt, but taking care of yourself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. And then are you married? Yes. Okay. So this is really cool. I I asked this because she shows a wedding ring and it's always a wedding band. I don't know why it's never fancy, but it's always just a wedding (laughs) band. Um, It's always been that way for 15 years. So she shows her wedding ring and she she shows you taking the wedding ring and going "Ah," and slipping it back on, back on. Mm. She's like, back on. 
um, mm-hmm. getting back into the game, getting back into that groove. Um, she's very happy about that. So this is symbolic. I can see if we look at timeline, I believe I'm looking at recent past where you're standing there, husband standing in front of you and he's facing that way. So he's not okay. facing you mm-hmm. and you're like, hello. And then he finally turns around and goes, I'm sorry. Okay. And re- like the reconnects with you and you're like, okay, game back on. Let's go. Um, she's like let's bad news good news bad news is that this is your pattern good news is that your bond is solid and so you'll be able to get through this pattern every single time even better news according to mom is when we call out the pattern you see the pattern sooner is what she does let's go so um she just she's really proud of you for how you've handled and approached um, this pattern. Do you have any questions around that? No, it's very on point. I did a okay. heroic dose of psilocybins in April, and I swear to God, it like shifted everything. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. it's like okay, I get it now. There it is. Um, Ashen differently, you know. Yeah, yeah, all of it. I'm glad we got to connect. So glad to. Thank you so much. This was I'm awesome. a great mom. I do. I do. We miss her, but I mean, I feel her all the time, but you know, you miss their physical presence still, even, even regardless, but yeah. 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 She's pretty lucky. Missed by many. <laughs> Missed by many. Really, really cool spirit. I'm just grateful that I get to meet her. So thank you so much. And that my friend is a little behind the scenes. Look, I took uh, portions of a session found a couple of hopefully helpful teaching moments for you. Let me know if they helped you out. And um, we'll do a couple of these and see if they're a good teaching tool. Because if they are, that's where my heart is. That's what I love. Now that you've seen Intuition in Action, I want you to click on this because this one is an instructional video that will really add to some of what we were talking about in this session.